Hello, good day and welcome back to Go on the Run. Now today I want to show you something that um, you've probably encountered and either come up, came up with a solution for it already or still not a, haven't settled on something. And that is how do you make your new function take optional parameters that are typed to configure a new value? Okay, so before we jump into that, um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're going to know when I post new videos. Definitely comment on the videos. Let me know if you sort of, if you like this video, what you think about it, what you think of videos like these that I've been doing lately, and so on. Right? If there's something specific you want to see, let me know so I can put it on my list of things to cover. Okay. So with that said, thank you very much, and so let's jump in. So I'll start out here very simple. So I'm gonna create a directory and I'll call it optional configuration. And so let's go into that directory. And I'm going to create a module from the command line. And so let's see if we can do this super fast. So let's do, let's create exercise 01 and then I have a main that go. And so what we're gonna simulate this is, let's say we're writing an application and what we need to do is keep, you know, produce or query a, let's say a database. We're gonna query this database, you know, maybe every hour, every 30 minutes, whatever it is, we can have that be configured. So that's one of the parameters we're gonna be able to pass in to or thing that's gonna be doing the querying. We have to be able to pass in like, what is it that we're gonna query? So the query string to select the data that we, we, we want returned. And we also need to know which database, the connection string to this database that we're gonna be querying, okay? And we might also need to have information about where do we write the information after we get it back from the database, things like that, right? So what we might want to do is let's just get started here. So we have package main, of course, and we have func main. And so we have that. Let me reduce this a little bit since it seems to be taking up a whole lot of my screen. And so hopefully that's still big enough. And so what we might say we have is something like type, let's call it config well maybe what we might want to do is put this in a package so let's call it database reader or database streamer so let's call it db um so db streamer or streamer yeah let's call it yeah streamer and um database streamer so let me just call it um streamer that go that go and so that's in a package and it's in the streamer package. And so maybe we have a type and let's call this type um, config and it's a struct. And so what do we want to keep in here? Well, we said that oh, we need the interval, where, you know, how often we're going to be reaching out to, um, you know, we have to run our query. So this is time that duration. I don't know where this is coming from, but I don't need this. Certainly don't need that type. So let's save that. Uh, maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller, slightly smaller. Hopefully people can still see this. Uh, maybe let's increase it back. Yeah, this seems to be getting really big. This sucks. Okay, we're not gonna be able to keep a lot on the screen. So hopefully people can see this. All right, so there we go. Um, so we have our interval and so then the other thing that we need is the query string, right? So the query that we're going to run, which is just a string um, representing what to run against the database. And of course, we need the database connection, right? So we might actually take a database connection as in something like a pointer to SQL, that database, right? This this thing, we, so we can connect to any sort of database. We just have to take um, that value and so we can test like against uh, SQLite or some other database, whatever, some, or some structured database. And maybe we might have to have some value like, you know, destination or something like that, right? Destination is a string. Okay, so, so that's enough for now, right? So where to get the data from, right? This is what this, this, um, this represents, you know, source of data, source to read data. How often to read the data? Query to run against 
source and destination. So maybe if we test it, we can just say write it out to a file, or maybe it's a URL, some RESTful endpoint, whatever. So we can be totally flexible with that. But yeah, so there's our, our, our struct. And so what we might want to be able to do is say, well, okay, how does somebody, um, you know, and of course we might have something that like says, like function, you know, let's just say we start out very simple and we say like, you know, read. That's like our basic function and we want it to be a method. So we are actually going to say, here's a config object and it has this read method and maybe it returns an error if it carries the data. But of course we already have where to write it to, so we don't actually have to return the data, right? So this might be something that we just say read. Now remember, we have an interval here, so you know we can just read whenever we want. Maybe we might change this to something like start, so we can say when we want to start reading the data, um, maybe when we should stop, right? But before a user can call any one of these, you know, start and stuff, they need to be able to create a an object that configures the, with, with this information. And we can certainly make this public by doing um, a, you know, capital C here. And so from within main, somebody can use our um, struct to configure it and then say, so for example, we can, if we, um, streamer here, this was, a public value. So let's select this. If this was streamer config, let's see. If it was something like this, then we can certainly from main do something like, you know, streamer that, you know, this thing, and then we can pass some value in, right? Um, so we can say database, you know, um, is some DB value, um, query is some query string, um, you know, interval is some, some interval. And so what would that would look like now is maybe we say database that error, colon equals to SQL that open, and so we open, so let's say we try an SQLite database and we can say, you know, this is going to be a file that's locked, SQLite, question mark, let's say cache uh, equals shared, for example, something like this. And if we scroll up here, we're going to have, um, we bring in database.sql, but we also need to bring in or initialize, you know, the SQL um, driver, SQL light driver. So something like that. That should that should theory work. And so I see that all we need to, you know, um, so if I click here, I can do click this and say get it. Or I can go in the command line and actually, you know, get it. And so, okay, cool. So that's fine. And so now we have our database, and then we can say, oh, you know, query, you know, colon equals to, you know, you know, select something. Maybe we do like this: select star from. None of these cases actually. The case doesn't actually matter, right? So products or something like that. And, you know, limit maybe limit. X or something like that, right? So information that we can keep and add to this so we can limit how much data we return. We can know we're, if we have to refetch data, all that stuff we can do, right? But that's our query. And so our interval then can be interval, you know, colon equals. And let's say, you know, maybe it's every 30 minutes we have to do this. The time that um, minute. And so there you go, okay? And so of course, if this fail, we can take care of this, right? So we can say if error not equals to nil, you know, you know, log ross or something like that. Okay, so so you get the idea. You've certainly seen things like this before, and so I can also click here 
do get this package and now we have to store our streamer configuration so db config you know db streamer is equals to this thing now we can then call db streamer and then say like start for example right and then test and see if it starts and then later on we can however long we want to run it for we can then stop it okay so that is totally fine now so what is the problem here oh no field database yada yada um so it should have oh so these are definitely hidden okay so now we'll have to not only make this public but make all these public also so we can access them outside the package so you start to see the problem that you could start to run into you expose in detail of um the struct that you need to be able to do this thing and so of course once somebody have a copy of this now they can then update it and change it so for example if we, we imagine that we had some field call field you know string and now somebody has a this value database streamer they can do database streamer that field and you can see it though you know they can check set it to something else All right so you might want not want to expose it publicly like this so people can configure it this way so what do you do so the thing that we know that you can do is you can just say i'm going to hide all of this and instead i'm going to say we have a new function that configures this stuff so we still sort of get the same um thing so actually let me undo this and keep that as example um one not desirable right and so we might then copy this and then call this example two so how do we fix the problem that we had before in example two so i sort of hinted at it already we'll make this private so you can still call this you know this thing we can make the name even shorter so we can call it db streamer stream config well whatever i'm not going to change it i'm not going to keep messing with that um, i want to make this a pretty pretty short video and so i always end up making them way too long so now this is hidden and so our code here is going to fail because we we no longer have access to this and so what we're going to do instead is we're going to create a new function called new and we're going to pass all the parameters we want and then we're going to return this db streamer right and so config we can say you know config is equals to ampersand you know db streamer config thing this guy and then we can put in whatever value we want and then we can return it so we can return config and then of course if there's an error we can also take care of saying that oh if we don't get some parameter we want or we can it properly initialize we can return an error so so that's all possible okay all right so the advantage of this now is that if i go back here and i'm going to copy these parameters here and then go back here and just paste them in new is that this now become a pointer to SQL that database. That's one of the parameters we want. This is now a string. And this is now time that duration. All right. And so put that there. And I need to put close parentheses at the end there. Come on, please get out of the way. Close parentheses. Now, once I have this now, now I can, why oh, is this complaining? Unuse parameter, yeah, I know that. So we can now configure this object with database, you know, db, and then query, you know, query, and then interval, interval. And so now, we have this and we, rec we can return this. Okay, so this is not being used yet. That's fine, I'm gonna ignore that for now. Okay, so what does this give us is now from main, 
we no longer call it this, but instead we call name. And we can still pass in our parameters this way. And so this is probably what you've been doing or you're seeing a lot of places, right? I've certainly done this a number of times, right? And this is sort of like one of the recommended ways, much earlier you can go to do this. And so as you can see, um, oh, we need to, I think I have two values that I'm returning, so that's fine. I'll save that. So, okay, what does it say? New is not declared. Well, that's because we're looking in the wrong directory, so we need to look in directory two, uh, example two, and this is no longer there. Okay, so now this is a lot cleaner in my opinion. We still get to pass in our individual values, but now, uh, and this, or main and external packages or whatever, whoever is calling, you know, database stream or using database stream could still call the function on it, but they have no direct access to anything that we might have in this package that they can manipulate. Um, so for one thing, if you look at our error message that we had just now here, it says field, you know, in our streamer, yeah, we got rid of field, but we don't need to expose something like that anyway, right? Um, because we keep things hidden, unless we, we want to, but we, when we have, when we do it the other way, we have to expose all this stuff in, in order for people to configure it, right? And you still see a lot of gold packages that way. No, time is running, so I said I'm gonna move on. So hopefully you've done this before, right? So what is the problem with this and why am I saying this is a problem? Well, if you look at what we're doing, we have to make a, um, a new method that carry all the parameters that we need to set. If we don't have a destination or a destination is required, then we must add destination to our new function. We don't even have that yet, right? So let's put in destination. So destination is a string. And of course, you know, we also need that. Well, I'm not gonna, let me do this. Destination, destination. Um, and let's do that, put it on multiple lines because it's just getting very, very long. Um, no, this is string. Come on. All right, so there we go. And so we now have this much longer um, argument list in our method, in our function. And notice that everything must be passed in this order from, from our users, whoever wants to use this, right? And let's just say, I say file name, because we're gonna write this for file, let's imagine. Let's come a separate value, for example. Maybe I wanna pull some stuff out of a database and then dump it in come, come a separate value format into some file. So let's say that's what I'm doing, right? And so as you can see the problem here, right? You have to put this. It's not a huge problem for just four parameters, but what if you have a structure that has a large number of fields that could be configured, but they're not all required. Maybe if we don't specify a file name, we want it to just write to a um, dynamically generated file name, or maybe write to the screen or some other thing, right? You might have some defaults. So how do you deal with that, right? Now we can still, in this example, still use a default, we can say test and see if destination is an empty string and then use it. But it doesn't really still do the same because if somebody wants to use a default, they have to still pass a parameter even if it's an empty string. So this is still limiting to me. So let's copy it and paste it. And so let's call this example 03 and we'll close up everything for now. What else can we do besides passing it? What if we want to be able to say that, you know what, I want to pass some optional value. And if I leave off or I don't pass a destination, it automatically writes it to some um, file. Or I want to leave off the interval. And if I don't specify the interval, then it's used some default, maybe orally, unless I overwrite it. So how can I be able to do things like that, right? So to be able to do that now, you want to be able to pass variadic parameters. But what you don't want to do is to say, well, I just have, and you might have seen these, this way of doing it also, where 
instead of this, what you have is like options. And then, you know, it's just something like interface. And so now, in order for you to configure your type, you have to iterate over these and test like what it is, right? So maybe you have to do something like this, and then you have to do this, and then you can have this there now. And so what we're gonna do is say for, you know, like option, um, you know, I don't care about the index. So option colon equals range over options. And so you'd think that though, this would solve the problem for you because then you just range over each one of these options, check the type, and then you're able to set it. But here's the problem. We have two values here of the same type, query and destination. So if you're ranging over these and you're checking to see which one of them is a string, I think it's too much work to do this and there's this drawback. So we're not going to do things this way, right? So um, of course, you know, this wouldn't be here. But if you know that oh you have a limited set of things and you can you know you know you want to do it this way then this certainly allows you to get that value out right but notice again you have to know now which one of these things or make a guess if you have multiple values of the same type so this doesn't solve a problem i think this just gives us even more problems but you've certainly seen this way of doing things before where you have an interface as a variadic parameter of interface so i think and this is the final solution. This is the solution um, that I would I've been set, I've settled on, and that is to let me do example zero four, and that is to use a type, a function type. And so what we can do is let's go back here, and so what we can do is let's just think about how we can use it. So I will say that oh we can use it this way. We can say streamer that with database, for example, and pass that, we can say streamer that with query and pass that. And let's just say we leave off interval because that's optional. That's the whole point of this is to show you the flexibility that with file, output file or something, something like that, right? And let's say that's the usage that we want. And so of course now we can get rid of this. And so all we have to do now is be able to write um, these functions here, right? Because this is what I'm saying, that these are actually function and you could pass them in any order, right? It doesn't have to be in that order, however you want. And so the way you do this then is, let me make sure I close that and I'm using the right package. And so let's make sure, oh, and in main, I should totally be using four here. And then for three, I should be using three here. Okay, so let's just make sure we're using the right thing. All right, so, so how do we do this? Well, like I said, it's a function. So one of the things we can do is we can say, we have a set of function instead of it being interface parameter is still variadic because that allows us to pass as few as we want, right? Or as many as we want and an optional number, but we want it to be type. So if we can say that we have a type, so if we can say we have a, um, something like a config, right? Which is a function that takes a pointer to our database configuration and then returns, let's say, a pointer to our database configuration. And I'm going to just skip ahead and spoil things and say, it's actually probably better to not even take a pointer, just take a value, okay? And so we have this config that is really just something that takes a, a configuration I return another configuration. Does that make sense? Well, let, let's see the full thing. So what I can then do now is I can then say that oh, I have these functions that I mentioned just now, these config functions essentially, 
So I can say function with database takes a database configuration SQL DB pointer, still takes that. And what it does is it return a config, right? But remember what config is. Config is a function that takes a configuration and returns a configuration. So all we have to do is return a function which takes a configuration, database configuration, and returns a database configuration. So how does this work? Well, if I have a configuration C, then I can do C that database, right, is equals to the database that I got, uh, the database that was passed in, and then I can return um, C, right, because it's just a value. That's it, right? So why is this undeclared name database database? Okay, my editor is way too helpful sometime. So that's what we have. And so we can write the other ones very simply. We can then say that our with query is something that takes a string because we know we're dealing with strings. It's so we have a query, or you can make it a short name if you want, like Q for query, and it's a string. And then here we know that our, on this configuration we set in the query, or we're gonna set it equals to Q. And then let's just write the other ones rather quickly. Let's write the ones, the other ones. Let's just write the other ones. And so this is with file name or output file name as we call it. Put file with output file. And then we take in the file name and then destination and you know file name. And again, just return the thing. By now, this is not mystery of what we're doing. And the last one is we add interval. So let's create interval even though I don't use it in this example. So interval with interval. And we have interval, interval time that duration. And then we're gonna set that on our interval equals the interval. Come on. Okay, so that's it now. And so for this, what we can do is simply create a configuration. We don't have to get the pointer for it. When we're ready to return it, we could return the pointer. If we still don't want to return a pointer. But now what we can do is within this, we can just iterate over our options and then say options that you know, um, call the options with our configuration. Why can we call the options with a configuration? Because our options here is just a bunch of config, right? And remember config is, is what? Config is a function pointer, essentially. It's just a function pointer. So we can call it. But if we go back over here, we can see now, um, so this is example four, where we get an error message, oh, um, so yep, I need to close this. But you can see that this works. I can compile this and show you that how it works. Um, let's put a message in here and say that, you know, we're streaming, for example. Um, oh, I didn't show the first thing, which is that we can have default values. So for example, when you create a new config, what we can do is we can set our interval or whatever other defaults we want, we could set that to, you know, our default. Our in default interval, which we can probably have up here, you know, so var, um, you know, default. I say our default interval, but really, this could be, let's say, 30 seconds or something like that, times, times that seconds, so we can see something. And let's just call this default interval, right? Default interval. So now, notice how we set that, and then if it's n if the, no 
parameter was provided to override it, well then, all good. And then in our start, for example, you know, maybe it spins off a go routine, you know, to go do stuff, um, you know, based on the info we provided. So this could be a seed um, pointer to, you know, the database configuration. And then we pass that in, config. And then within our go routine, for example, we can set something that say we're running so that our, this function here, stop, could stop it. Like, you know, we can do a cancel or something like a context, but at least we can, you know, get it, set this running, right? So we can have four, you know, FMT print, you know, or we can do log rust since we have log rust. Um, info F, um, you know, fetching data. something like that, right? And so we can do config, you know, see that we're fetching from, you know, some database so we can put the query, but we can certainly put the time, you know, um, time that now, for example. And so let's fetch in data at, let's just leave that. Something like that. And um, da -da -da -da, potentially unused parameter C. Oh yeah, so. Um, and so what we want to do here is sleep a little bit, sleep duration. Um, see that interval. So yeah, so there we go. And so now if we were to, let's see, my main is going to make my program end abruptly. So, um, and stop doesn't do anything. I mean, that's what I'm saying. We could use a context or a cancelable function in the context, but here I want to do time that sleep and let's say we sleep for, you know, one times times that minute, right? Or 60 seconds. Um, and so two times I should see um, or thing go wrong two times. Maybe I should just to see it run a little bit faster. Let's set our default to not 30 seconds, but rather 10 seconds or maybe five seconds, really. We don't want to wait that long. Five seconds and in main, we'll just wait um, seconds. Second, and we'll just wait 20 seconds. And so if I go here now and I go to four and I do go run main, and we should see that it should start running. And there you go. Spin out every five seconds, I should see a message being written and you could see it from here, right? And I think this is much, much more flexible. Notice how we're using the default. We can pass in any number of parameters we want. So if we want to change this and say, okay, you know what? I don't care about the file name, but what I really care about is setting a duration. So with interval, I know I can do, I want this to run, you know, every second instead, time that second. And so this to me gives you the most flexibility. Uh, we well, get expected this, that, from that. Um, not sure why is that from that. Okay, time that second. Oh, I have an extra, extra um, thing here. Uh, so let's set our time to one second and test. So we clean up and then we run. And what's happening? Oh, this is oh it's still five seconds. It looked like it's still using the default. So why is that? Um, I am certainly set passing one second here, and I'm confident that my width interval is actually setting the interval value. And we can confirm this by printing out the value that we returned here. So let's do that. So if I do fmt.printf, and then I do, you know, um, let's do percent, percent pong v, new line, and then I do, uh, where's the config value? And specifically, I want to see what that interval is. So let's also print out interval. So that's the one that seems to be giving us some issue. So I should see one, okay? Uh, one second. So let's go back here, clean up again, and run. And I have my database. Oh, interval is still five. 
and database is null. So none of these are being set actually. So what's going on? Okay, so I think I know why. If you remember, we said that when you call an option, it takes an option and return an option. So we're supposed to save our updated option and we're not doing that. So if I do config is equal to this, then we shall see that uh, once I clean up and run again, as you can see, database is no longer nil, interval is one second, and here is our query. And you can tell that it's actually running much faster. So that was the bug is that once you do it this way, you have to update. And the nice thing that I like about this is that it get, allows you to do these defaults. And of course, here we see it all you can pass in the parameters in any order you like. You don't have to put them in any fixed order. If you have a long set of not a large number of options that you want to configure, this is like the perfect way to do it. You can provide sensible defaults and only what the user wants to res the user of your packet of your package wants to overwrite, they can overwrite and they can put it in any order. So I think this is pretty cool. Let me know what you think. Um, have you ever run into this problem? How did you solve it? Did you use this way um, of solving it? Okay, I'm gonna end this here um, much longer than I want it to be, but hopefully that was clear. The other thing you can do is you can, since these are just functions that you're calling, these with functions, you can make them very um, complex. So for example, when we're doing with database, we could separate um, out and say, you know, if we take in the connection string, we can say with, you know, credential and, you know, pass in, you know, like out of values here, like true and all these other things, right? Or username and stuff like this. So, so your with function here, when you call them here, can actually take multiple values because they, they're just functions that update the configuration and then return an, another configuration. So hopefully that makes sense and let me know what you think. All right. Take care. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.